In the last video, we talked about the number of neutrons and how you can find the number of neutrons using the mass number um, and the, the atomic number. So if you know the mass number and you know the atomic number, you can find the number of neutrons. But it turns out that actually some atoms of the same element actually have different numbers of neutrons. And we call these atoms isotopes. Okay, so isotopes of that atom. So for instance, if you look here over at hydrogen, hydrogen's on the periodic table and it's got atomic number one, which means it's got one proton. And if we assume it's a neutral atom of hydrogen, that means it also has one electron. But hydrogen's a little bit weird um, because by itself, hydrogen doesn't actually have any neutrons in its nucleus. But hydrogen also has different isotopes. Okay, so there are zero neutrons, so zero neutrons over here. But one of the isotopes of hydrogen is we call deuterium. So we give it that name deuterium, but it's still hydrogen. It just has a different number of, of neutrons. So deuterium has still, you know, the one proton. That's what's making it hydrogen, right? Remember, the atomic number tells you what atom you have because each atom... Each atom has a different number of protons in its nucleus, and that tells you which atom you have. All right, so it has one proton, so it's still hydrogen. Uh, it's got one electron, right, because it's a neutral atom. I haven't said it's not neutral. Um, but deuterium is different because it has one neutron. So this is what makes it an isotope of hydrogen. No neutrons here, one neutron here. And then there's also another type of isotope of hydrogen, which is tritium, and that has two neutrons, right? Same number of protons, same number of electrons, right? Still hydrogen, just an isotope of hydrogen that we've named something else because of that difference in neutrons. So isotopes have the same number of protons, the same number of electrons, but a different number of neutrons. Okay, so most elements actually exist as mixtures of isotopes. So what do I mean by that? So let's take a look at carbon here. Uh, we already looked at hydrogen earlier, so let's look at carbon. So zooming in on carbon here, carbon actually has three different isotopes. So looking here, we've got carbon is always gonna have the same atomic number, right? Same number of protons, that's not changing. Isotopes are atoms with a different number of neutrons. So the mass number is changing because the number of neutrons is different. So for carbon-12, we have a mass number of 12 and atomic number of 6, which means we have uh, 6 neutrons. For carbon-13, right, we've got a mass number of 13 and an atomic number of 6, so we've got 7, oops, 7 neutrons. And then for carbon-14, we've got 8 neutrons. Okay, so all the same type of atom, just a different number of neutrons. And it turns out that when we look at carbon in nature, about 98.89% of carbon on Earth exists as carbon-12. So that's the most common form or isotope of carbon that we're going to find in nature. Then we've got about 1.11% of carbon on Earth existing as carbon-13. And then just a trace amount of carbon exists as carbon-14. A lot of you may have heard of uh, carbon dating. And carbon dating is actually where we use, scientists can use carbon-14 to figure out how old an organism is that's already dead. And this can allow us to look at old fossils and figure out how old those fossils are and what era they came from. All right, and then one other thing I wanted to note before we talk about um, this question mark that I've written here is that um, each isotope, we, we don't always name isotopes different things. So for hydrogen, we say deuterium and tritium, and those have different you know, names for different isotopes. But for most isotopes, we actually just label it in a certain way um, that's a little different. And that's uh, either, for so for instance, for carbon, we can say carbon... 12 like that or sometimes you'll even just see c12 okay and these are all how we label the isotope uh, of carbon that has a mass number of 12. likewise carbon 
with a the isotope of carbon with a mass number of 13 would be written like this carbon 13 or C13. Carbon 14 would be carbon 14 like that or C14. Okay, so just a dash and then the mass number. All right, so we looked at these two columns on the left, but now I wanna focus on the two on the right. So you'll notice that these two columns on the right, on the left we have atomic mass with something like AMU under it, right? What is that? And then we've got average atomic mass also reported in, it looks like units of AMU. So what, what is that? So it turns out that the masses of atoms are so, so tiny that it's easier for chemists to use a unit that's not grams to express them. And this is called the atomic mass unit. Okay, because if we were going to express the mass of these different atoms in grams, we would be writing kind of lots and lots of numbers because they're really tiny. Um, so the atomic mass unit or AMU or even sometimes abbreviated U um, is defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon 12 atom. Um, and this is a little bit weird, but... The reason that we define uh, one U or one AMU as one twelfth the mass of a carbon twelve atom is because we like to uh, kind of define the mass of any isotope of any element in relation to the carbon twelve kind of standard. Um, and this isn't something that you need to memorize, but it's just to tell you where this AMU kind of comes from. Okay, but more importantly, um, how do we actually describe the mass of any given element? So the way that we do this is we calculate the average of an element's atomic masses and we weight those by the natural abundance of each isotope. So what do I mean by that? So when we look at something like carbon, scrolling down here for a second, you'll notice two numbers on the periodic table, right? There's the atomic number, which we've already talked about. That's the number of protons. It also tells you that we are carbon. Um, and then there's the bottom number here, which is 12.001. And this is expressed in AMU, or uh, atomic mass units, or U. Okay, and the reason, you'll notice that for carbon, remember we have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. And what does that 12, 13, and 14 tell you? Well, that's the mass number of these different isotopes of carbon. So if you look at carbon on the periodic table and you're looking at the atomic mass, you're noticing that the atomic mass for carbon is close to 12, right? Very close to 12. And why is that? That's because that number that you see on the periodic table for the atomic mass is actually taking into account the relative abundance of these different isotopes of carbon on Earth. So our atomic mass that we see on the periodic table is going to be closer to 12 than it is to 13 because most carbon on Earth exists as carbon 12. Okay, so we can actually calculate this. We can calculate the atomic mass. You don't always need to because it's already given to you on the periodic table, but it's, it's kind of cool to see how this was actually derived. So there is a formula for it. So the idea is that the atomic mass, whoops, the atomic mass equals the relative abundance of your first isotope times the mass of your first isotope plus the relative abundance of your second isotope times the mass of your second isotope. And then if you have more isotopes, you can add the next ones, relative abundance of your third isotope, isotope of the, the mass of your third isotope, um, and then you're going to divide all of those numbers by 100. And that's just because the relative abundance is given in percent form. So in order to convert back to decimal form, we want to divide by 100. So this is, again, a lot easier to see in an example. So let's try this out. All right, so this practice question says boron consists of 19.78 percent boron 10 with a mass of 10.01 u or amu and 80 percent sorry 80.22 percent boron 11 with a mass of 11.01 u calculate the atomic mass all right so we're going to need to use our handy dandy formula 
And you'll be given this formula on an exam if you have to use it or a quiz. But it is the atomic mass equals uh, percent abundance one. So our first isotope, right? First isotope times the mass of isotope one. plus the percent abundance of our second isotope times the mass of our second isotope, all divided by 100 to get it back into a decimal form. So this is our second isotope. Boom and boom. All right, so let's try this out. So we've got, I'm going to copy down parts of this equation, atomic mass equals, and then we got to fill this in. So the first percent abundance of my first isotope is 19.78. So I'm going to write that here, 19.78. Okay, and then that mass is given to us here, 10.01U. U. U. I'm not going to put the percent sign here because we're going to divide and get rid of it with this 100 um, down here. Okay, so we'll just leave that unitless. And it is, it's just a, it's just a percentage. All right, and then we have to add our second isotope. So our second isotope is, uh, let's see here. We got 80.22%, so 80.22. And multiply that by our mass for our second isotope, which is 11.01U. Okay, and now we just gotta carry out that calculation. I know it looks kind of scary, okay? But we're really just multiplying the mass of our different isotope by the percentage that it exists in nature, okay? So right away, when I'm looking at this, are you expecting your atomic mass to be closer to 10 or closer to 11? Think about it, I'm not gonna tell you the answer yet. Closer to 10 or closer to 11, and why? What are you kind of going to expect? All right, so let's, uh, let's calculate this. So I got 1081.22U on the top, and then on the bottom, I got 100. So we're going to divide that by 100, and that's going to equal 10.8122, and we got to keep our units, right? U. And that's our atomic mass. All right, so 10.8, about 10.8. So looking at this number here, notice that it's a little bit closer to 11. And that's what we would expect, right? Because most of the boron, about 80% of the boron on Earth, exists as boron 11, isotope boron 11, whereas only about 20% exists as boron 10. Okay, so this number is closer to 11 which reflects that isotope's abundance on Earth.